Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we'll be talking about how Dune has officially been greenlit for a quote sequel even though it's technically just part two of the story which was very much incomplete in part one. So we'll dive into what is being covered here by the mainstream news and how disingenuous a lot of the mainstream news media is really being about this whole process and especially about exactly how much money this film is making in the process. Uh, before we any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, lad that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, and also make sure you're subscribed to the channel with that bell notification turned on. That way you know every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So this is something that broke yesterday. We talked about a little bit on the live stream last night, and that is that Dune has officially been greenlit to have part two of its story come out in theaters October of 2023. So we have to wait about two years for this film to actually come to theaters. And notice it does indeed say theatrical window, one part of the deal in this between the different studios that are behind this film, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures, is that it has to have been a theatrically exclusive film. Obviously, Warner Brothers is looking at this and saying, okay, yeah, well, you know what? Things are going to be fine and back to normal by that point. And so, hey, why not? Obviously, I have my dudes about that just because we all know that when people have power, they very little, very not often want to give up that power. And so I still have my own doubts about exactly what the world is going to look like or what theaters are going to look like, what passports are going to look like uh, as far as getting into an actual building. And so we'll have to, of course, wait and see. That could easily have an impact on box office numbers, especially on a film like Dune, which, as I've mentioned previously, I personally am a fan of. I like and love the Villeneuve's filmography. I think that he is one of the best working directors currently today in Hollywood. I have been a big fan of projects that he has done in the past, which would include even, of course, this new film, Dune, though my biggest issue with it is the fact that the story, I do feel, is a bit incomplete. One, because it tells, obviously, only one part of the story of the original first book, but also, even of the first part of the book, it talks about, it leaves a lot of certain details out. Uh, someone actually had emailed me, kind of breaking down their own personal issues, and they bring up a pretty big point, and, and I mentioned it briefly in the stream the other day, about the character of Kynes, and how the character of Kynes is actually a much bigger presence in the book, and in fact, and this is something I did not know, that the, even the writer of the book, uh, Frank Herbert, even he said that Kynes is one of the most important characters in the book, and so the fact that Kynes kind of takes a back seat in this, uh, you know, in this version of the story in the Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 1. Obviously, that is something that is, is worth talking about and worth mentioning, and that's the reason why I think you're seeing such a, uh, again, really divisive conversation about this. There are some people that went in with no knowledge and loved it. There's people that went in with no knowledge and hated it. There's people that went in with partial or full knowledge and loved it, and then at the same time, those that hate it as well. So Denis Villeneuve has always been kind of one of those polarizing figures because he is able to produce really great work, including uh, just beautiful visuals. He works really well with cinematographers, works really well with DPs. He also works very well with production designers and they're able to really create these images where every single frame is 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 not wasted every single frame adds something to the story has a story itself to tell and i think that he does this again very well in the film dune despite the fact that there are i think some story issues at least just from my own perspective of having a limited knowledge of the story having been uh almost halfway through the book when i first saw the movie but let's go ahead and dive into the story from deadline and kind of call out what deadline is trying to do here as it says is what comes in what comes as no surprise the sequel for dune finally has been greenlighted for or greenlit for an october 2023 theatrical release with director producer and co-screenwriter denis villeneuve returning so again this is something that um, I had mentioned before I had very much expected to happen. It is interesting, though, that they say that this comes as no surprise because it really to really should come as a surprise to the studios involved, seeing that they never marketed this film as Dune Part 1. Yes, in the movie itself, when the screen opens up, it does say Dune Part 1, but in the marketing for this film, it just has been called Dune. It has not been called Dune Part 1. It has not been indicated as being a part of a larger story. So it seems that the studios involved very much had their own doots, right? Had very much their own doubts about 
whether or not this film was going to be able to get to a part two. And obviously that question has now been answered. But to say that it comes as no surprise, I would say is a little bit disingenuous, especially with the numbers not really being all that impressive when you compare them to even other pandemic releases. And also the fact that the studios themselves clearly did not have full fledged confidence about this film. Otherwise, they would have been promoting this as part one and would have greenlit part two a long time ago if that is actually what was the case. So again, an interesting decision then for them to just say Dune and then I guess they're just going to call it Dune part two. Uh, again, I guess I have there are some precedents for films not being called part one when they are the first part of a series. That being said, it is still interesting nonetheless. Obviously, a big part of this relationship between Legendary and Warner Brothers is that there is not going to be a day and date release for HBO Max. And so obviously that's going to make some people upset because I know there are some people who have really enjoyed the day and date release, being able to watch films at home. Though, uh, just based on my own experience of watching Dune at home, I can say that I definitely uh, cannot wait to go see this in a theater, especially in an IMAX screen which I would recommend if you are planning to see this film in IMAX to go see it as soon as possible because coming up next week, uh, October, or rather November 5th, is when Eternals from Disney comes out and that film is going to be taking over pretty much all of the uh, various IMAX screens that are there. The Greenlight News was announced on Tuesday on the Legendary and Warner Brothers social media. This is only the beginning. We're excited to continue the journey ahead. And again, there is the image for Dune Part 2. It says here, while David Lynch's 1984 feature adaptation of Frank Herbert's 412 page 1965 novel crammed the whole story into one movie, by the way, I hate that film, it was always a part of Denis Villeneuve's vision to spread his reboot across two films. I just received news from Legendary that we are officially moving forward with Dune Part 2, the filmmaker said. It was a dream of mine to adapt Frank Herbert's Dune, and I have the fans, the cast, crew, legendary Warner Brothers to thank for supporting this dream. This is only the beginning. And again, the box office itself is not that great of an indicator, I would argue, um, though it is performing decently well over on HBO Max. We'll talk about that in a second. But as it says, Dune overperformed its domestic projections this past weekend. Okay, well, let's 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 just hold on for a second here. Um, even the site Box Office Pro, which I had been using uh, to cover a lot of the projections, was saying the film was expected to make around forty million dollars. That was kind of the average. It was expected to make somewhere between thirty-five and forty-five million. So to say forty-one is overperforming, I, I think is a bit disingenuous because technically it is a million over what the standard uh, projection was, even though they might have had some studio heads or some executives uh, in the projection world kind of lowballing it a bit to say like 30 to 35 million to say, oh man, it performed... To say it overperformed, I, I think is kind of indicating that it did so much better than expected. It did slightly better. Like, and that, even that's kind of already giving it a little bit too much of, of you know, as far as the performance actually is. However, I think what is very impressive by that is over half of the ticket sales were driven by large format theaters. So that would be things like IMAX or there's an, also another format called Big D. Basically, big sound, big image typically was able to um, support this film. Now, in regards to the HBO Max numbers, this is something that's interesting. It says, while Warner Media has not reported any figures yet for HBO Max, Samba TV, which measures streaming viewership in 3 million U.S. homes, reported that 1.9 million smart TVs watched Villeneuve's Dune over the weekend. Among the theatrical HBO Max titles measured by Samba, that's the sixth best weekend debut by Warner Brothers Day and Date. Mortal Kombat topping that list with $3.8 million. Now, if you remember, Mortal Kombat was a box office failure on so many different levels and metrics, and yet that film did incredibly well on HBO Max. Not nearly as well, or rather, it seems at the very least, that when we look to a film like Dune, it's not doing nearly as well as even Mortal Kombat. And I think that even people that are not a fan of Dune would have to argue that, objectively speaking, Dune is a much better film as far as being a much better made film uh, as everything else, especially since Mortal Kombat really isn't even Mortal Kombat in a lot of different ways. As it says right here, all of this is an indicator that those who wanted to watch Dune saw it in a movie theater. Warner Brothers launched the movie ahead in overseas market where its, con uh, where its current global box office stands at 223.3. I do think that is probably a, a relatively good indication um, of the fact that most people wanted who wanted to see this film saw it in theaters because it is doing better uh, than what Mortal Kombat was able to do, though not as well as HBO Max, which means more people were willing to watch it on HBO Max than go to a theater. So I do think that that at least is a line that is um, definitely, I would say, more so on the mark than anywhere else. But they do make up a point, right, which is that the film is around $223.2 million worldwide after having a $41 million. Even though this might be impressive for the HBO Max day-and-date release model, in comparison to other films, it's not that impressive. 
What will be interesting to see is what kind of drop-off we see in its second week of release domestically, and also what kind of drop-off we see in its second week in various other marketplaces. Remember, that when it comes to the international marketplace, it opened up in several countries and only made around 47 million from all of those markets together. Half of that new international number specifically came from China. Some people were trying to fight me on that point, but hey, China made $23 million. The other markets that came in made about another 20 million or so for it. Um, and in the end, it also made an additional $40 million from the domestic marketplace. So in total, it made about 80 to $100 million in new money. Again, this makes sense because before going into the weekend, it was roughly around $150 million or so. So again, math is is math. And so again, don't, <laughs> don't bring up things when it comes to math if your math does not actually add up. Anyway, as you can see from this, though, um, obviously a, a chunk of this international number is coming from China. Uh, France is as high as it is because it's been out in France for about a month at this point. And the issue that Dune has is that it's not really set to open up in a lot of other countries at this point in time. It, 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 it's, again, it's, it's run out of territories to open. And so unless it has an incredibly strong domestic weekend and an incredibly strong international weekend, um, you could see theoretically this film gets you maybe $300 million by the end of this weekend. Again, I would say that's probably going to be more so on the high end. And of course, we'll have to wait and see exactly, you know, what it does in the day and day numbers internationally as well. But let's say that it does get to around 300 plus million dollars by the end of this next weekend. You're still looking at a film that needs to make another 100 plus million dollars worldwide in order to reach its own break even number. So even though this is a film that by standards set by certain people in the media is doing well, if you look at the actual box office numbers itself, it's not doing it as well. I'm very excited that Dune is getting a sequel. And again, I am looking very much forward to going to see this on a big screen, on an IMAX screen, uh, because obviously I think that is definitely the way to watch and consume this film. But again, the production budget of $165 million makes this film still quite a bit expensive and trying to see any of the uh, next releases that it has. As you can see, um, there are no future releases. The only one that I can think of would be Australia, which has obviously had a lot of delays. New Zealand as well obviously because of the various lockdown measures and passports and all the nonsense that's going on over there. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't think that it's going to make enough in those specific areas to be able to, you know, account for a crap ton of new money. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. What are your thoughts about this number? Um, and also, what are your thoughts about this news that Dune is getting a sequel? Again, really, it's just part two of a two-part story. But do you think that they honestly believe this film was going to be successful? I think the fact they did not promote the film as a part one is a big indicator that even the studios behind the film did not have a lot of confidence in it. And even though, as I said, the filmmaker, Denis Villeneuve, had part one in the beginning of the film itself, marketing is a very good indicator of what a studio thinks about a given film. And since this was not something that was greenlit before going into it, since this was not something that they were doing at the same time, again, look at Avatar. Avatar has like five movies going on right now all at the same time because all of them have been greenlit by Disney. You have a lot of other films that are doing similar things. So to say that they had confidence in Dune and that it's no surprise that Dune's getting a, a sequel or a part two, I, again, I just think is a bit disingenuous. But let me know your thoughts about this and anything else I mentioned in the comment section below. If this video smash that like button, loud the fire button. It really does mean a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. A huge shout out to Biffer the Hobbit, JC over on Patreon, and also Kara Tharp. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my Patreon subscribe star and locals members. Andrew Hoyle, animation commentator. Brandon, Brian P, Christopher Bowman, Don Bruno de la Mancha, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father. Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, Harold Francis, Inflamed Wood, Jacob Juice, Jeffrey Toon, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Gomer Kyle, 79, Laura, the Modern Major General's Story, Mike Jackson, Dion, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mondo Spieler, Mr. Peabody, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Priscilla Hall, Rosetta Allen, Stan Andrian, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benin, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you for being my Patreon members, and a huge shout out to my subscribe star members, The R, Fast Reaction, Nosferatu Gatsu, John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, 
Glinzer, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., Dean Heiss slash the new number two, J. Rod the Beer Guru, and ZK Man. Thank you very much for supporting me over on Subscribestar and to my one Locals member, Robert Barnes. Thank you for supporting me over on Locals. And if you want a name shouted out, or your name rather, shouted out at the end of every single live stream and video, please consider joining on one of those platforms, either Patreon, Subscribestar, or Locals. Links to that can be found in the description. Look at that top link especially. It's called the Willow link there. It'll give you links to all the social media platforms and also ways to support the channel. If you want to be an Army of Asgard level or above member, you can get access to giveaways that I do every single month. I give away 4Ks, Blu-rays, all kinds of stuff. It is a lot of fun. Also, if you join at the Keeper of the Bifrost level, you get access to all of that. Plus, you get access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flick and we have a lot of fun. We do that once or twice a month. And if you join at the Chosen of Valhalla level, you get all of that. Plus, in your first month, you get a t-shirt of your choice and send anywhere in the world. And also, you get to be featured on the channel once a month on the Chosen of Valhalla live stream where we get to hang out and have a good time. So anyway, if any of that sounds good, check out that link in the top of the video. As I mentioned, you guys are amazing and beautiful people. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.